So this is gonna be a bit of an unusual video that I'm used to doing. This is gonna be more of like a vlog repair guide kind of thing. Because in front of me is a 2011 MacBook Pro. This is the 15 inch model, which means this thing has a dedicated GPU. Now, most common issues about these 15 or even 17 inches MacBooks is that their GPU tends to do this. If we power up the machine, it won't even give you the Apple logo or your profile to even boot. It will just bring you to this blank white display. And this is why these 2011 MacBook Pros are terrible and why you should probably stay away from buying one. And if you happen to have one of these, you're better off repairing it, selling it on eBay, and let some other poor soul pick it up. Because even after you do this repair, this issue will come back and haunt you. The reason why is because Apple used a really bad chip set for the GPU, which costs the internal ships to pretty much desolder itself out of its place. Well, in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing in the oven, show you guys how to properly repair it, and if it doesn't go well, I'm still gonna put out this video for you guys to have an idea why these 2011 MacBook Pros suck. Now, let's go ahead and open this thing up, and what I always like to do, I just like having like a towel or something underneath my surface to prevent, of course, scratches from occurring, and also it's easier for me to arrange all the screws. Now we have this place. Go ahead and pick yourself up one of these repair electronic kits. It will pretty much include all the necessary tools you need to repair any sort of electronics. They only cost like $15 or so. These things are definitely affordable and will save you a ton of time and money from buying a bunch of different screws individually. It would probably help if I had the MacBook turned off. Place that aside. I already removed the hard drive. So this is how the internals look like on these MacBook. Uh, I recommend removing the battery. Some people will say you don't have to. I recommend removing it because there's a bunch of wires underneath here and taking out the batteries help us out by giving us a plenty of room to work with. Take out the RAM and these ribbons right here, we're all gonna have to disassemble and disconnect all of these just to get this logic board out. Now let's go ahead and begin. Now when it comes to removing the display for it, I know this one could be a bit tricky. What you want to do is this little thing, this is like a little latch. Want to slowly lift it up. As soon as it's released, you can pretty much already pull it out. Either using the latch or just use the cable ribbon. And the cable ribbon is what I like to do. Prevent any damage from the pins. And don't pull too hard or else you could damage the cable itself. There's another cam cable right here. Right there. That one we need to take out. And this one's a latch, I believe it is. All right, but first we gotta remove this. And just wiggle it out. Just like so. And this should just disconnect like that. And now you're able to free this thing. There we go. Now we need to remove all the screws that's holding the logic board together. And just like that, I believe we removed everything. So just carefully lift off the logic board. Now on this right corner right here, it's gonna be the cable adapter for the speaker. Just pull that out. It's just one of these little cables you just pull out and I'll release this. And just like any PC builder would, use a motherboard box from a previous build. All right, so about this, for those asking what this thing is, well, this screw got messed up and it's un I'm unable to remove it. I'm probably gonna have to snip this out and probably think of a, think of a way to make this thing, because this thing is a little padding here, 
that allows these cable ribbons to be protected. Uh, well, I'm probably going to cut this out and engineer some sort of way so this thing could go back in its place. But let's flip it aside. And now we got to remove everything, all these screws right here. So all these screws are spring loaded. So we're, when removing them, you have to be super cautious not to let them fly out and get lost. And let's simply lift it off. And here's our heat pipe. Now our heat pipe. So at this point, grab some rubbing alcohol and just remove the uh, thermal pacing that it had on both this and the CPU and GPU itself. That should about do it. Now we gotta remove the speaker because this is gonna go in the oven and we also gotta remove this. And this has thermal in there as well. And there's that, we also have to clean that and clean that and apply thermal once we're done. There we go, just pops up straight up. And there's also one that we gotta remove here. Oh my God, it's dusty down here. I don't know what kind of thermal paste Apple uses. These are not good in my opinion. Honestly, I'm not really looking for perfection since I'm gonna be selling this. And as long as I know it will perform like how it should perform, that's all I care. Uh, I can't get this one out for some reason. The screw is like ridiculously tight. Like I can't. Remove it. It just doesn't want to twist. Wow, that is a shame. It's gonna have to go in like that. But other than that, I mean like, the logic board is ready to be placed inside the uh, oven, just minus that. So now let's go ahead and grab one of these little things to go in the oven. Grab some aluminum foil. Oh my god, we're cooking a MacBook. Can't believe it. All because we're trying to fix the stupid GPU. And just place it like so. Hopefully that doesn't do anything because I cannot remove that without damaging the board. All these plastic pieces you see here are able to withstand like four or 500 degrees. So that should be fine. Now let's just go ahead and preheat the oven. We need to preheat the oven. Bake. 350 or 370 for five to seven minutes. So, let's start. All right, once our max temperature is reached, simply place it in. There you go. and set Siri, Google, Alexa, whatever, for seven minutes in there. So, yeah, I'm gonna place my laptop here. Now we wait seven minutes. A few minutes later. 30 seconds left. Yeah, these uh, last few seconds are kind of terrifying because I'm not sure if this is gonna work. It's at 50-50 chance in a way, although this is a permanent solution, but it's not gonna fix itself just sitting there and just laying it do a thing. So I might as well attempt to fix it, am I right? Well, yeah, seven, eight, nine, ten. Take out our precious, freshly baked logic board out of the oven. Jeez, that is hot. Trying to melt anything underneath. Turn this off. Turn off our light. Uh, I've been living in this house for how long and I just couldn't figure out how to turn off the light for a second, for a few seconds. And uh, ladies and gents, that is our uh, freshly baked MacBook logic board. And uh, so far nothing seems to be melted. So yeah, these things are rated at 700 degrees. Oh my God, I can feel the heat waves. So at this point, just let it sit for honestly a good hour. 
because we're gonna be all hands on and placing this thing back together. So uh, just let it sit and cool down. So an hour later, this is cool to touch now. Let's go ahead and take our logic board and simply place it over back on our motherboard box. You don't need a motherboard box for this. I just have one because I'm used to working on motherboard boxes whenever I'm dealing with motherboard or logic boards. Now we just have to pretty much reassemble the entire thing. Now we are gonna be needing thermo and I love using this thing. This thing has a good reputation. Arctic Silver 5, I used it on a couple of my past builds and this thing always worked fine and a bunch of other tests out there always show that this thing performs really great for its value. Let's go ahead and apply some. Don't really need to apply an awful lot, you just need to apply just a decent amount, like a rice size. But feel free to comment down below if you think that I applied too much, I really don't care. Because you really can't really mess up thermo pacing. The only way you can really mess it up if you don't apply too much. And there you go, our board is now good to go. Checking the back side, seeing nothing caught on fire. No, oh, everything looks normal. All right, now let's just replace everything, starting with this thing. And then also you gotta be careful not to crush any of the wires that need to be on top. So I'll take some small tweezers, pull them out. All right, moment of truth. Everything's good, everything's assembled. Cross our fingers. Ha. Huh. So far so good. I don't know what happened that first time that didn't boot. Apple logo, that's good. I think it worked because I wasn't able to get this close last time. It was just like what you guys were seeing, just that white screen. Oh well, if it doesn't work, it worked. And there, honestly, I was about to say, if it doesn't work, well, we now know how to disassemble a MacBook Pro. But there you guys have it. Uh, I have not used this laptop since 2015. And after doing a bit of research, after picking up the 2010 MacBook that you saw on this video, you can click the little i card right there. Uh, I found this issue about the 2011 MacBook Pros. Let me enter my password real quick. Wow, I have not seen this MacBook working in like, yeah, since 2015. But I'm gonna resell it because unfortunately, this isn't a permanent fix. This will constantly happen. It will just occur and occur. You could continue putting the thing back in the oven, let it heat up and re-solder the uh, GPU chip components back to its place. But in my case, I'm just gonna sell this MacBook. It's in perfect shape. I don't know how much. They're selling like around $400 or $500. And I'm gonna have to do this to this computer. Now, if I wanted to keep this, you can disable the GPU from this ever happening, allowing the Intel processor to pretty much power or display the display. Yeah, you could do that route. If you have a 2011 MacBook Pro, you did this process, put it in the oven, you could just disable the GPU as soon as you're back on the screen. You can't do it on the boot up menu by holding the option or anything like that. This has to be done in the user profile in order to disable the GPU. I haven't seen this computer in like so long. But there you guys have it. Hope you guys like this video. This is a repair guide on how to repair the model a1286 macbook pro or even the 15 inch macbooks also had the same issue but as always hope you guys like this video and enjoyed this little vlog if you did make sure to smash that like button as well as subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys in the next video peace